So we completed a uh, 407 kilometer odd exit the weekend. And I just go through my bike setup here. Now, the odd X had some gravel roads in it, not a huge amount, but still some gravel roads and back roads. So my setup here isn't optimized for um, kind of road ultra events, but still probably a lot of the bits and pieces could, some of the tips could be reused for road type events. So go through the setup here, maybe just start at the back. So I'm using on wheels, they're Hunt gravel wheels. So a bit more uh, stronger than probably the road versions. Tires, I'm using those Schwabi Pro 1s. They're, I believe they're 30 millimeters tubeless. I have used them for over a year now on various different setups and I do like them. They seem pretty resilient to certainly cuts like the big punchers. Not much at all. The pressure wise, running, I believe I'm running about 80 psi on those. So, looking at the gear setup, I'm running GRX. So, at the front, I've got a 42 toot. The back range 1142 as well. Some complain there might be too many jumps between gears. I don't have any issues chain is very dirty at the moment probably picked up a lot of dust on the gravel sections I did it well oiled before the event derailleur, GRX derailleur no issues with the didn't miss a beat uh, nothing else up there pedals using mountain bike pedals they're crank rolls uh, one thing I did find and they don't really they're nice and uh, free there did notice a couple of squeaks coming from them. I think the bearings probably need to be um, replaced in the coming months, but for the moment it's fine. I do like um, mountain bike shoes for these sort of events because you can walk around, not like with road shoes, it makes it a bit more awkward walking around. Um, not much more on the setup. I had two bottle cages, two bottles of water. Um, let me see on the, oh, at the back frame here. So the frame itself, Planet X gravel frame. It's a titanium gravel frame. At the back here, this is a tip I picked up last year from Porig Mary, who was one of the organizers of the Wild Mayo Ultra, is if you go to a motor parts store and purchase its trailer reflective strips, they come and you buy so many meters and then you can chop them up and I have two reflector strips here at the back I used um, some insulation tape just to tidy it up so it wouldn't peel off so it's extremely reflective and some people will also put it on their seat post I just don't have enough room but if you put that on any rear facing parts of your bike but even from the side view as well, it's um, um, unbelievable how much that those strips will reflect um, light. So anything else down here? No, I did carry, it's part of my spares. I did carry, actually it's probably still in here, spare gear cable. Um, last year at an event, my gear cable broke at the finish line and a lot of bikes now nowadays have internal cable routing. Some people prefer, on, um, especially maybe stuff doing long distance, to have the gear cables running on the outside because you're not really carrying huge speed. It makes for much easier maintenance. If I was break my gear cable, I could actually get that replaced really quickly because the cable's all on the outside here. Moving forward, the front wheel has got a hub. Um, it's a sun hub. It provided all power for lightings during the event. One lesson I learned is if you're running a hub, bring a small light with you as well, handlebar light, because at one point during the odd acts, middle of the night at stop, as with a few others, the light will hold, um, you know, it'll light up for about 30 seconds. 
but then start to go dark and you could be a bother so if you break down have a puncture you really do need to have a battery powered light as it just can be something small just for emergencies so I had no major issue but kind of learned that lesson okay let me see anything else on the bike no let's talk about storage so I have saddlebag on the back here I don't know if those the big ones are just a medium sized saddlebag here I had tubes and I had my ring cape in that I didn't have this top tube bag and in here I have um, a junction box for the dynamo what it allows me to do is I can have power coming up from dynamo two outputs one going to the lights one output then going to this USB charger which I can then use to power or charge a small battery uh, power bank and then I can charge my computer and all that sort of stuff from it I can switch off the lights during the day just pulling that cable there that means there's no load on the dynamo so I'd have food still see bits of chocolate bars in there some food in the top tube bag then for this trip I bought a new frame bag and this huge amount of storage in here but you need to be careful I'm struggle at times to um, pack light I'm inclined to bring too many things and that's kind of happened there's stuff I brought home never used and all of that is weight lost all has to be dragged up the hill so lost power dragging all this stuff around so you have to be very careful in here everything from a tubeless repair kit um, I had extra layers packed in here um, but yeah you get loads of storage but you have to be careful and it can, and also as well it'll make taking out your bottle is just you know it's a little bit harder it's a bit tighter there but I had everything I needed in, in the bag carried food as well for night like sandwiches and stuff or uh, wraps in my case so lots of storage but you have to be careful about overpacking uh, frame pump just make sure it works before you leave if you haven't used them if you buy one and don't use it for a long time they can seize up so checked all that the chain is very dirty but I've mentioned that already okay further up here saddle is a infinity saddle I think it's E3 model they are expensive um, saddles are very much a personal thing I've used road standard road cycles or saddles on long cycles or spins before no issues well certainly this one would be a bit more comfortable all right um, so no real complaints there on the cockpit itself I this time around I ran the time trial bars excellent addition um, it meant a couple of hours I was on the TT bars my hands like pressure points uh, I reduced one because my hands were like just you know they were resting um, one thing to watch though these bars are um, the stack height here is not very high so in my case I have hand position here I can go on the hoods but I'm restricted I lost a hand position I can't so watch that if you're going to buy time trial bars uh, be careful you either need to get a higher stack out here somehow or in my case what I'm going to do is I can change this top bracket here and you can get a flip vers version so I can flip up the armrest and just give myself that extra hand position I do like maybe sometimes climbing hills to use the um, my hands on the on the handlebars at this point so yes I did lose a hand position but there is a way around that but if you are going to get something yourself just watch out for that um, bike computer mount up front and that's pretty much it um, so some things on this if I was doing a full on road ultra event I would definitely use um, handlebar or TT bars some the real fast guys will use TT bikes I 
if there's a lot of hills, I don't know, I wouldn't fancy it. I prefer to having the road bike with the TT bars on. I would probably use that saddle for my road. Probably not Dynamo for the road ultra events. I'd probably rely on battery powered lights for those. It's just I'm not gonna faff around trying to get the hub Dynamo on a road bike. This is more for adventure, Audax type and Vince and um, that, that's my setup so few t few tweaks few lessons um, maybe a couple of tips you can pick up there yourselves